Hi, my name is Kara Kowalski. I'm Ryan McHugh. We did a uh, project on shark conservation and how and why we should conserve them. And we just have a short video to introduce our topic to you. Why are sharks so scary? Bloodthirsty beasts just waiting out there in the ways to feast on human flesh. If only we could get rid of these guys, our vacations would be so much safer. Nothing to worry about while we're surfing and frolicking out there in the oceans. Except that's not the case. We don't have anything to fear from sharks in the ocean. No more than I have to fear in this swimming pool. Really, it's sharks who should be scared of us. There's more than 400 species of sharks on Earth, and they've owned the ocean for more than 400 million years, before the dinosaurs. So thanks to a combination of fear and neglect, we humans might just wipe them out in a hundred. That bites. But why do we even care about sharks? You might think a few less shark teeth in the sea would make for a better world. That's not true. Let's imagine just for a minute what would happen if we let that fear and neglect win. We ignore what scientists and nature are telling us. What if there were no sharks? By and large, sharks are big fish, and one of Mother Nature's simplest rules is fish eat smaller fish, which eat even smaller fish. And some of those smallest fish eat algae. Well, if we kill the biggest fish, those sharks, then instead of coral reefs, we could have this. Ugh. Or take my friend Ray. Ray likes to eat scallops, and this shark likes to eat Ray and his friends. So, no shark, and it's an all-you-can-eat scallop Ray buffet. That's exactly what happened off the coast of North Carolina when sharks were overfished, and now there's no more scallops there. That's bad for Ray, and bad for us, because I happen to love scallops. Without sharks, the sick and injured fish that they usually eat could throw schools into chaos. And it's not always about what sharks eat. Sometimes their mere presence can change the way that marine animals feed and behave. Most food webs are much more complicated than Big fish eat little fish, which makes it hard to predict precisely what would happen in a shark-free ocean. But that doesn't mean it's a risk we should be willing to take. How about this? If you kill a shark, you pay for it. If you're in Palau, that'll cost you $2 million apiece. Research into the value of sharks to tourism show us that a living shark is worth way more than a dead one. Sharks keep ecosystems in balance, and that balance is the product of thousands sometimes millions of years of evolution and adaptation. We don't know how or even if the oceans can respond to such sudden changes. The sharks are slow-growing species that don't breed often, and that makes them extra vulnerable. The ecosystems that sharks help manage cover two-thirds of our planet. They provide us with more than half of the oxygen that we breathe, and three billion people rely on them for food and their livelihood. Whatever might happen in a world without sharks, it's not good for us. You probably noticed that number getting bigger. That's how many sharks were killed while you watched this video. Each year, humans kill more than 100 million sharks. 70% for their fins, which are made into soup. The rest by habitat destruction are just thrown away in bycatch from fishing. How many people do sharks kill? Not many. Come on in. Have some real talk. Time after time in movies and during certain week-long specials on cable TV, sharks are portrayed as these dangerous monsters, toothy terrors of the deep that are just out to get us. But if movies have taught us anything, it's that the scariest monsters are the ones we don't see, the ones that remain mysterious. All this week, a bunch of our favorite YouTube channels have teamed up to bring you awesome shark science. So go check them out. Remember, the more you know, the less you'll fear. Thank you. So that was just a quick video to introduce our topic to you and all of the um, areas we'll be covering today.
So if you were to go onto Google and you were to type in a couple adjectives to describe a shark, these are probably the words that you'll find that will come up on the internet. Words like fierce, predator, dangerous, hungry, vicious, strong or scary. But really that's not the case. Sharks um, play an important role in our ecosystems. They play an important role in our food chain. They help ensure balance in the ocean's ecosystem by helping remove weak and sick fish. And they help keep seagrass, beds, and other vital habitats healthy. So we really need our sharks. Um, types of threats that sharks suffer from are shark finning, uh, bycatch, overfishing, and shark fishing tournaments. Uh, shark finning is the practice of uh, removing the sharks from, uh, removing the fins from live sharks. Uh, the sharks are sometimes discarded back into the ocean and still alive, but without any fins, so they can't swim. Uh, without being able to swim, they'll sink to the bottom and they'll die by suffocation, and they'll or they'll be eaten by other predators. Uh, so right here we have a diagram for you. Um, all the different um, fins on the shark. We have a pectoral, pelvic, anal fin, colluda fin, secondary dorsal, and the primary dor uh, dorsal fin. Tens of millions of sharks are killed you. each year for their fins. It was considered a status symbol to be able to catch a huge animal and just use a little part of it. Rebecca Rudnery with Humane Society International says Asian countries and communities around the world who eat shark fin food are driving demand. Their fins are cut off, um, including their dorsal fins, the back fins, and the side fins, pectoral fins, and even the tail. And the shark is thrown back into the water, often alive. Those sharks will die in the ocean soon after. And Rudnery says it's not just cruel. It's bad news for all marine life. So they can kill the animals so quickly and so efficiently that the shark populations are plummeting. She says if a shark species goes extinct from an ecosystem, other species will experience overpopulation, leading to a depletion of their food source, eventually killing off the whole food chain. It's hard to say where the point of no return is reached and when we cross that line. And the fear is once we cross that line, there's no going back. The U.S. put a federal ban on shark finning, but it doesn't prevent the sale of imported shark fins from countries that haven't banned its cruel practice. Some states have banned the import and sale of shark fins, including Hawaii and California. And the bill has been introduced in New York, which has the second largest Asian community in the country. Let your lawmakers know you want shark products banned in your state, because once sharks are gone, they're gone for good. <clears throat> Another thing that uh, sharks face that uh, that often kill them is um, bycatch. Bycatch is uh, when commercial uh, fisheries and fishing boats go out and they basically throw out nets and these sharks get caught up in the nets and then they end up dying subsequently. And we have another video for you about uh, shark attacks. Watch. Sharks are tangled up in a worldwide threat that endangers their existence, bycatch. Every day, thousands of miles of nets and hooks are lurking in the ocean. This powerful fishing gear is extremely strong and efficient at catching fish, and anything else I'm lucky enough to swim into it. At least 40% of all marine catch is accidental, including keepers, turtles, dolphins, and sharks. Bycatch accounts for about half of all shark catches, or 50 million sharks every year. Almost 90% of hammerhead sharks and 80% of dusky sharks in the Atlantic have just escaped from bycatch in the past 20 years. Modifying fishing gear is one way to reduce bycatch. Using weaker hooks and bait restrictions is another. Counting what's caught can also help reduce bycatch. If fishing crews count their hooks, researchers can better monitor the catch of species in 
help. You can help by only buying seafood from local sustainable fishermen. Small scale fishing teams often use lower impact catch methods like hook and line, which is better for your community and safer for the ocean. Another threat that um, sharks may experience is overfishing, which is to deplete the stock of fish in a body of water by too much fishing. Sharks are at risk for being driven to extinction due to overfishing, and almost 100 million are killed each year due to overfishing. Uh, these are two pictures of sharks from overfishing. Um, sharks also experience uh, fishing tournaments. They suffer from that. Uh, shark fishing tournaments are kill tournaments. They're caught and brought back to the dock. They'll be measured and weighed, and they'll, many of them will lose their lives because of this. Why do people want to kill sharks? People want to kill sharks for their fins, and a lot of people make shark fin soup and shark dumplings. Uh, also, uh, a lot of people uh, use sharks, the oils in sharks, for supplements. A lot of people believe that uh, the oils in their livers and cartilage uh, will actually cure cancer. Uh, not a lot of people know, but uh, a lot of cosmetics actually uses shark oil um, and also sharks are made into uh, steaks and fillets, they're made into skin and leather and then they're made into souvenirs like uh, necklaces with teeth on them. Uh, shark conservation. This is the act of preserving, repairing, protecting and preventing the injury, decay, waste or loss of sharks. Um, the management of shark conservation. Fisheries are regulated to ensure healthy stock and long-lived fishery. In the U.S., the Magnuson-Stevens Fishery Conservation and Management Act was established in 1976. Well, this law regulates marine fisheries management in the U.S. federal waters. This goes out to 200 nautical miles. Uh, the functions of this law. Uh, the first is to prevent overfishing, the second to rebuild overfished stocks, the third to increase long-term economic and social benefits, number four is to ensure a safe and sustainable supply of seafood. This law uses stock assessments and sets annual catch limits and determines response to non-compliance. Uh, trade limitations. The Convention of International Trade of Endangered Species, which is short for cities, is the entity that regulates the international trade of endangered species. This can be really hard to monitor. So many fins uh, look similar once they are removed from sharks. And in order to um, test which uh, fin comes from which shark, there's new new genetic tools that allow us to take small samples from the fins and determine the species of shark. Uh, no kill tournaments. This is a new thing that isn't as popular yet, but is seeming to become more and more popular. It's an alternative to conserve sharks. Um, there will be photographers and observers on boats. They'll go out and take pictures, measure, and document the catch, and then the shark will be released and continue to live their life. A uh, more positive action that's been taking place, an anti-fin campaign in China occurred recently with a retired pro basketball player, his name is Yao Ming, and he's working with Wild Aid. Uh, this is because he wants to educate others about the importance of sharks and sh the shark finning impact on shark communities. Groups like the Pew Charitable Trust in the U.S. Shark Conservation Act of 2009 it is a law that made removing a shark's fin, even from a dead shark, or having a shark fin, even abroad a vessel, illegal. Keeping a 
Shark Attack on File, the University of Florida's Museum of Natural History houses and helps to compile the shark attack files. This helps the public to understand that humans pose a bigger uh, danger to sharks than they do to us. Um, help from technology. Cameras allow us to document and give us better understanding of the shark life. Um, they let us see into the life of the shark, um, the reproduction, the feeding, migration. Um, satellite tags provide long-term monitoring of the shark movements around the world. Pole tagging, the use of a pole or modified spear gun um, without, that will not injure the shark is a way to keep a way to track the shark without having to catch it. This helps us collect information on the shark that is tagged. Technology helps us gain the ability to better preserve and protect our sharks. Uh, this is a few ways to get involved uh, with the shark conservation. Um, shark Defenders, Sharks for Kids, um, Shark Advocates International, Oceana, uh, Save Our Seas Foundation, and the Guy Harvey Ocean Foundation. Um, this is just some funny we found online. This is the most dangerous animal in the world, responsible for millions of deaths each year. By his side, we can see white sharks swimming peacefully. All right, guys, that's it for our presentation. Thanks Thank for watching. Thank you very much. Have a nice night.